Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Scenes Worship Podcast. My name is Sarai Scott and today we're going to be talking about how to transition during and after a worship set. Transitions during your set become a lot easier when your songs have a cohesive theme. Having a cohesive theme helps in making sure your transitions are seamless and leave little room for rambling. For example, a set theme could be, I will bless the Lord. The songs could be, Bless the Lord by Ty Tribbett. I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Your next song could be, Bless the Lord, O Mighty Ones. So bless the Lord, O Mighty Ones. Bless the Lord, ye heavenly hosts. And your last song could be, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. An example of a set that does not have a cohesive theme would be something like, Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. And then, rain on us. Rain on us. Breathe on us. Shower down, shower down. Now for those two songs, how in the world do you connect? those songs that have such opposing themes fire and rain don't mix they cancel each other out so in an effort to connect those two songs you would have to do a lot of talking and a lot of talking could serve as a distraction and a break in worship now songs also don't have to be matchy matchy either like the example i gave of bless the lord but a cohesive theme could also be something like naming God. So you could use songs like That Great Name by Todd Delaney. We love to call your name is something we cannot explain. And Savior by Ty Tribbett. Savior, Savior, the one you saved has come to worship you. Now here are some examples of transitions that you could use between songs. Something you can do is take words out of the song that you just sang or the song that you're about to sing and speak them or say them in a prayer. If it's a new song that you're introducing in the moment, you could talk through the words like take the chorus or the vamp and use it as a time to teach it. You could say something like, we have a new song today, let me teach it to you, or repeat after me. And then once you talk through those words, then you can start singing that chorus or vamp. You can get the audience singing it, and then you can start the song from the beginning or from that point um, and continue on with it how you see fit. You could also read a scripture that actually aligns with the set. We often hear that scripture is our friend during praise and worship, but it also matters what scriptures we use. We can say scriptures like Haggai 2 and 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. But unless we're singing the song that says, your latter will be greater than your past, then the scripture doesn't necessarily work. This is another reason why I say it is important to have a cohesive theme within your set. So your scriptures can be a seamless connection between the songs. Now let's say your set is centered around giving to the Lord worship and glory, right? So then a sample set could be to our God by Judith McAllister. I will sing praises unto my king, yeah. We ascribe glory and honor and wisdom and strength to our God. Right. And your second song could be You Deserve the Glory by Juanita Bynum. You deserve the glory and the honor. So the scripture transition between those two could be something like Psalm 29 and 2. Let's imagine that we just came out of To Our God by Judith McAllister. And the song ends with nobody like you, nobody like you. Right. We end it. The band can start playing. Um, you deserve the glory and in that time you could say something like Psalms 29 and 2 tells us to ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness 
We worship you today because you are so deserving of the glory and the honor and the praise. You deserve the glory and the honor. That's an example of what I mean when I say make sure that your scripture actually aligns with the set. Don't just pick some random scripture (laughs) that has nothing to do with the set. The other thing you can do is just let the musicians play. We do not have to fill every moment with words. Sometimes we can over talk a moment and be a distraction. How do I know? Because I've done it before. (laughs) I literally talked too much in the transition. And even though I gave a cue for the team to begin singing, they missed it because it was so crowded with so many words. I also want to point out that in 1 Samuel 16 and 23, it talks about how David played his harp for Saul in order to calm the tormenting spirit. It never says that David said anything, but rather it focused on the playing of the instrument. So trust your musicians to be spirit led in that moment and don't be afraid of silence. Another transition you can do is just share a quick testimony of how the song that you just sang or the song that you're going into, how it relates to you and your life and maybe the revelation that you got as you were listening to and studying the song that week. You could also sing the chorus or the vamp of the song you just finished at a different tempo. So, for example, this past Sunday, um, we did Lord, You Are Good by Israel Halton. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Right. The chorus of that is we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the transition that we did was um, as soon as we ended the song with the you are good, a little rumble for a little bit. But then the keys came back in with the chorus at a slower tempo so we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are and then we went to here i am to worship here i am to bow down Right. So we just sang the chords of Lord, you are good at a slower tempo. And it helped us to transition seamlessly into here I am to worship. And the last thing that you could try is letting the audience keep singing the chorus of the song that you just finished or the vamp that you just finished without music. The only way that this works is if we make sure that the songs that we have chosen are easy melodies and easy words to catch on to. We also have to be paying attention to, is our audience engaging? Can, can I hear them singing? Can I see their mouth moving? <laughs> you know, have they learned this song? Have they picked up this song? Because nothing is worse than breaking the music and be like, audience, you sing. And the audience is not singing back <laughs> because the song was too difficult. It was too many words. The melody was too difficult. There was just too much going on to where the average congregant couldn't catch on to it. So make sure that if you want to use this transition, make sure that the song or the part that you want them to continue singing, make sure that it it was it's easy for the average congregant to catch on to word wise and melody wise. Now, after your worship set, what are some things that you can do? Now, the first thing to be mindful of is that. How you transition after really depends on what is happening right after worship and what the head leadership or whoever is in charge of the order of service has designated to come next. So something that you could do is say a prayer after your set is over um, or there could be a prayer moment that's led by another leader. So as you end your song, another leader would be walking up and ready to to pray. You could also say something like, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn your attention to the screen for announcements. That's if you have video announcements that comes right after worship. You could have a moment where you lead the audience singing while you transition off. A song that we've done this with is, um, here's my worship all of my worship right so you can motion for the team to walk off while the audience is singing that and carrying that um 
and then you could like still be verbally leading you know say it again church here's my worship right as you are slowly walking off but you're leaving the audience singing and that is good to make sure that the audience has taken ownership of worship that's one thing that that my bishop um taught me was that we want to make sure that when we are leading worship that we provide an opportunity for our audience for our congregation to take ownership of the worship something else you can do is just leave the band playing while you transition off because once again sometimes it's not about the words sometimes it's about the music and the Lord can use anything he can use your words but he can also use the musicians and the band to um, bring breakthrough and and to move through so trust your band to be spirit led and you can transition off like that Um, you could also do a hard stop you know and begin exhorting you could do just a hard stop and a walk off which then allows for another leader to come and transition to the next part of service So as always, let the Holy Spirit lead you in what to do for your transitions during and after your set. One week, it may be prayer. Another week, it may be letting the congregation sing. In all cases, remain prayerful and also skillful in your transitions. If you are not confident in speaking just yet, or if the audience is few and you know that they might not be able to carry you know, a moment by themselves, there are so many different other options that you can do in order to transition well. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope this podcast was helpful and answered some questions you might have had or even gave you confirmation that you're on the right track. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.